Hello guys, welcome to lecture 2. So in this lecture we will first start with the distribution of binomial proportion. So in statistics we use sample mean that we derive from measure variables. So sample proportion is generally derived from counts of frequency data. So the construction of sample distribution of a sample proportion is done in a manner similar to the mean and difference of two means. So we still take the same case here. When the sample size is large, the distribution of the sample proportion is approximately normal because of central limit theorem. So here, proportion P cap is written as X by N. So remember this formula. So we call this basically a rescaling value. So we just rescale the value to find the actual value. Now, the mean, so the mean here becomes P cap and the standard deviation sigma x bar becomes p times or p sigma x square becomes p times 1 minus p by n or it's also written as p q by n so here if n is large and p is not too close to 0 or 1 we consider that to be approximately normal so this is the formula for z score so p cap minus p by under root p times 1 minus p by n so let's take an example and let's try to solve this problem. So what do we have in the data here? So it says that in the mid 70s, according to a report by the National Center of Health Statistics, 19.4% of adult US male population was obese. What is the probability that in a simple random population of size, simple random sample of size 150, the population is fewer than 15%. So here P cap is the mean. So P cap here is 19.4, sorry. P cap here given is 15. P here is 19.4. Remember that P is the actual proportion from the population that you have. So, or we can write it as the population proportion. So, we also call it the population proportion. So, based on that data, and n here is 150. So, this is all the data that you need. So, how would you calculate Q here? So, based on the idea here is that P cap and P should be ratios. So, how would you calculate that ratio is divided by 150. So, notice that what they have given is not P cap actually. They have given P 15 by 150 and p becomes 19.4 by 150 so you have 1 by 10 and 19.4 by 150 so based on this data that we have now so let's try and calculate q here so q is 1 minus p so which means 1 minus 19.4 by 150 so let's calculate the value for 19.4 by 150 first. So, so that value is 0 0.129. So this value is 0 0.129. And this becomes 1 minus 0 0.129. That value will become 0 0.871. So this is the value of Q and this is the value for P. So we know the formula for z, so z becomes p cap minus p. So here the probability is fewer than 15% means that probability of p, so probability of p cap greater than 0 0.15. So fewer than 15, sorry, less than 15%, 0 0.15. So 15%, basically 15 divided by 100, that becomes 0 0.15. So Z formula gives P cap minus P by under root P times 1 minus P by N. So P cap again is 0. Point, so this is 0. 0.1. So 0. 0.1 minus. So remember that 0. 0.15 is the value that you have taken here. So let's try and solve this problem. So what is given here in the mid 70s according to a report. So there is 19.4% of the adult US population was obese. What is the probability that in a simple random sample of 150, fewer than 15% will be obese? So here, P is the population proportion. 
remember that this is p always represents the population data so from the population data it's given as 19.4 percent so which is going to be 19.4 by 100 so it becomes 0 0.194 p cap here is the sample proportion what is the value given there so that value is fewer than 15 percent so 15 divided by 100 so this becomes 0 0.15 so what they're asking you here is to find the probability of p cap less than 0 0.15 so this is the value that they are asking so we have to convert p cap into z so to convert p cap into z use the z score formula which is p cap minus p by under root p times 1 minus p by n so n given is 150 here so p cap here is 0 0.15 minus 0 0.194 over so under root P here again is 0 0.194 times 1 minus 0 0.194 by 150 so you have 0 0.194 times so 1 minus 0 0.194 is 0 0.806 so times 0 0.194 and divided by 150 and take the square root of that particular value So that becomes so 0 0.15 minus 0 0.194 divided by 0 0.0323. So when you calculate the actual Z score, so you have 0 0.15 minus 0 0.194 divided by 0 0.0323. So that Z value becomes minus 1.36. So we are basically converting this into probability of a Z less than negative 1.36 so how do you get negative 1.36 here again use the standard distribution table so we are looking for negative 1.3 so we have negative 1.3 and negative 1.36 so in this row the matching value is 0 0.0869 so the value becomes the probability So the probability of z less than negative 1.36 is 0 0.8691 sorry 0 0.08691 or we can write that probability of p cap less than 1 point sorry 0 0.15 is 0 0.08691 so this is how you can solve the problem and get your answer now let's try another problem here so pause the video right here and try to solve this problem so what is given in the data here so Blanche Mikkel studied the use of prenatal care among low-income african-american women she found that only 51 percent of these women had adequate prenatal care so this is the data from the population so this becomes p next so let us assume that the African the total value is 51 percent and if 200 so 200 is n so women from this population are drawn at random so they're asking you for less than 45 percent so p cap here is 45 percent so let me write it this way so this value is p cap so they're asking you for probability of p cap less than 0 0.45 so pause the video right here you have p 51% 51, 51 by 100 so which is going to be 0 0.51 yen is 200 so use the data now pause the video right here and try to solve this problem next let's go to the next topic distribution of difference between the two sample proportions so we discussed difference of the distribution of sample proportion we discussed now difference between the two sample proportions again it's similar to the originals between two sample means here also we have two samples n1 and n2 and from two populations p1 and p2 and mu will have become p1 minus p2 and with the, pop, the value that we are expecting is p1 cap minus p2 cap so this is the formula for variance so sigma square equals p1 times 1 minus p1 by n1 plus p2 times 1 minus p2 by n2 
So the Z score formula is gonna be P1 cap minus P2 cap minus of P1 minus P2 over under root P1 times 1 minus P1 by N1 plus P2 times 1 minus P2 by N2. So this is the formula for Z score. So let's try and solve this problem here. So what is given in this data here? So note down first the data that they have given here. So in a certain area of a large city, it is hypothesized that 40% of the houses are in dilapidated condition. So a random sample of 75 houses from this section and 90 houses from another section yielded a difference of P1 minus P2 of 0.01. So P1 cap minus P2 cap of 0.09. If there is no difference between the two areas of proportion of the dilapidated houses, what is the probability of observing a difference this large or larger? So notice that they have given the value for P1 and P2 but both are the same. So P1 equals 0.40 P2 is also equal 0.40 but they did not give you P1 cap and P2 cap but they gave you the difference between the two values is 0.09. What they are asking you is that they are asking you to put the for the probability of difference larger than the original value itself. So they are asking for probability of P1 cap minus P2 cap greater than or equal to 0.09. So how would you solve this? Again note down first N1 and N2 as well. So N1 here is 75 n2 is 90 so again substitute everything into the z score formula so z formula is p1 cap minus p2 cap minus of p1 minus p2 over under root p1 times 1 minus p1 by n1 plus p2 times 1 minus p2 by n2 so based on the data that we have n1 the value originally 75 n2 is 90 p1 is 0 0.40 p2 is 0 0.40 and we are finding the probability of p1 cap minus p2 cap greater than or equal to 0 0.09 so that value becomes we are trying to convert this into z value so the z formula is p1 cap minus p2 cap minus of p1 minus p2 over square root of p1 times 1 minus p1 by n1 plus p2 times 1 minus p2 over n2 so p1 cap becomes 0 p1 cap minus p2 cap here is going to be 0 0.09 which is already in the question minus of p1 minus p2 is 0 0.40 minus 0 0.40 so that is 0 by under root P1 is 0 0.40 times 0 0.060 by 75 plus 0 0.40 times 0 0.60 by 90. So based on this data, how would you calculate the answer? So we have 0 0.09 divided by square root of. So first calculate 0 0.4 times 0 0.6 divided by 75. So that value is 0 0.0032 plus again 0 0.4 times 0 0.6 divided by 90. So that value is 0 0.0027. So you have 0 0.09 by when you sum it up, you get 0 0.0059. So based on the data now, you have the square root of this value. So the square root of that value gives you 0 0.09 by 0 0.0766. So divide the two values. You have 0 0.09 divided by 0 0.0766. So that gives you a value of 1.17. So this is the value for 1.17 or when you round it off you get actually one point so the original value is 1.1749 so when you round it off you should get 1.18 because 9 this becomes 5 
and 5 this becomes 8 so you get 1.18 so this probability becomes probability of z greater than or equal to 1. 1.18 so when we calculate the probability of z greater than or equal to 1.18 we can we can't calculate greater than we have to calculate less than so it becomes 1 minus probability of z less than 1.18 so again use the standard distribution table and calculate the value for 1.18 so this is 1.1 so we need 1.18 so this is the value for 1.18 so 0 0.881 so 1 minus 0 0.881 so 1 minus 0 0.881 becomes equal to 0 0.119. So the probability that P1 cap minus P2 cap is greater than or equal to 0 0.09 is 0 0.119. So this is how you can calculate the values using proportions. So use this principle here. Pause the video right here and try to solve this problem here again it's the same exact problem so pause the video and try to solve this problem so again pause the video try to solve this problem So with this, we end our lecture on sampling distributions. So I'll see you again in the next lecture.